welcome to a new episode of Patient Pulse. Today, we are joined by Tara Leck, a member of the NATF Medical Advisory Board. Dr. Leck is also an anticoagulation and cardiovascular clinical pharmacy specialist and currently serves as a thrombosis program manager at Leahy Hospital and Medical Center in Burlington, Massachusetts. And today, she's going to be talking about what patients should know about Paxlovid and what to do if you have to take Paxlovid and you are also on a blood thinner. So I will turn it over to you, Tara. Hi, and thank you for that introduction. Our goal for today is to help you have a better understanding of the who, what, when, where, and why of Paxlovid therapy and what to do if you are on a blood thinner. So to start, we just wanted to talk a little bit about what is Paxlovid. And Paxlovid is a new medication that is used for the treatment of COVID-19. It's important to know that it's allowed for emergency use only, and it's used to treat COVID-19 positive patients with mild to moderate symptoms. It comes in pill form and should be given to patients with a higher risk of developing severe COVID-19 illness. Patients must be 12 years or older and weigh at least 88 pounds to be eligible for therapy. So who should take Paxlovid? As we said before, Paxlovid is indicated for COVID-19 positive patients who have started having mild to moderate symptoms. And the key is that those symptoms have started within the past five days and that those same patients are at a high risk for hospitalization, severe breathing problems, or death. And while we don't always know who those patients are, some high-risk features for predicting who would be at risk for the hospitalization, severe breathing problems, or death include age 65 or older, cancer, diabetes, dementia, heart disease, kidney disease, liver disease, lung disease, obesity, smoking, history of stroke, or those patients that are known to have a weak immune system. And what are the benefits of giving these patients Paxlovid? Well, one, it helps to keep them out of the hospital. It's available in pill form, so you can pick it up from your pharmacy and treatment can be taken at home. And if you do qualify for use, it has been shown to decrease your risk of hospitalization or dying by upwards of 89%. How can you get Paxlovid? So the first thing you need to do is call your healthcare provider you need a prescription in order to get Paxlovid. And it must be prescribed by either a doctor, a nurse practitioner, or a physician assistant. Once you get the prescription, you're going to need to find a local pharmacy that carries the medication. The good news is that there are websites out there that will help you to find these locations. You can either call around to local pharmacies that you go to or search COVID-19 medication locator in your search browser to help you find pharmacies near you. So once you go to the website for the COVID-19 medication locator, there are a few steps you're going to have to take to find the nearest drug to you. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to the bar where it says therapeutic selector. It's a fancy way of saying, what drug are you looking for? When you click on the therapeutic selector, it's going to give you a drop down and you're going to search down to the P's and find Paxlovid. The next thing you're going to want to do is to go to the map and you're going to type your address in this little search bar to find the nearest pharmacies to you. And you can see here that I've searched for Longwood Avenue in Boston. And fortunately, there are 10 locations near there that carry the drug. And then when you look down this list, you'll see which pharmacies carry Paxlovid. And then the wonderful other piece of this is that it's going to tell you how many packs each place has available. So if I wanted to fill my prescription at the CVS on Beacon Street, I can see that there are 21 Paxlovid packs available. And if the Longwood Avenue location was closer for me, they have 18 in stock. So I should not have any problem picking up my medication. And then once you pick it up, it's important to know how you take Paxlovid. So first of all, it consists of two different medicines packaged together. The first is nermaltrevir, which are the pink tablets, and ritonavir, which is the white tablet. And you're going to take two pink tablets and one white tablet by mouth twice a day. So in the morning and in the evening for a total of five days. Important things to know here are that you need to swallow these tablets whole. Do not crush, chew, or break the tablets. 
And do not stop taking Paxlovid without speaking to your healthcare provider, even if you are feeling better. And what should you discuss with your healthcare provider before starting Paxlovid? So it's always important that they're aware of any allergies that you've had to any medications, that they know if you have liver or kidney disease. Sometimes people with kidney disease may actually need a lower dose of Paxlovid. It's also important they know if you are pregnant or breastfeeding, or if you have any serious illnesses. You also need to tell your healthcare provider about all of the medications that you take. And this includes prescription and over-the-counter medicines. So things like vitamins and herbal supplements. If you're taking CoQ10, fish oil, or anything else that may not be filled in a pharmacy, you still need to let us know. And that's because some medicines may interact with Paxlovid and may cause you to have serious side effects. Keeping a list of your current medications to show your healthcare provider and your pharmacist is extremely important. And you should always show them this list whenever you are starting a new medication. And now the question on everyone's mind is what do you need to know about taking Paxlovid if you are on a blood thinner? And the first thing I need you to know is that Paxlovid interacts with most blood thinners, and that includes warfarin, apixaban, bedoxaban, rivaroxaban, and abigatran. The interaction is with that ritonavir, that white tablet. And the interaction is important because it can cause higher levels of blood thinner in your body, and this can increase your risk of bleeding. If you are on any of these medications, you need to talk to your healthcare provider to decide if it is safe for you to take Paxlovid while you continue on a blood thinner. Some blood thinners should not be taken with Paxlovid and others may require a dose change or careful monitoring. Never stop your blood thinner without speaking to your healthcare provider. The effect of this interaction lasts up to about eight days. So we need to be thinking about how to manage your blood thinner for the five days you are taking Paxlovid and up to at least three days after. If you are on a blood thinner that interacts with Paxlovid, your doctor has a few different options that they may choose. One is to temporarily lower the dose of your blood thinner. They may need to temporarily switch you to another blood thinner. So sometimes injectables might be used. Drugs like Lovenox, which you are given through injection, do not interact with Paxlovid. They may need to temporarily hold your blood thinner. So if you are at low risk of clot or stroke, that may be an option. They may need you to choose another treatment option for your COVID-19, or they may choose to manage your symptoms of COVID-19 with over-the-counter remedies and supportive care. Another question that we get asked in the clinic is, can I take Paxlovid if I've had a blood clot in the past? And the answer is yes, you can still take Paxlovid if you've had a history of blood clots. Paxlovid does not put you at an increased risk of developing another blood clot. But again, it is important to make sure your healthcare provider knows if you are still on a blood thinner for treatment of a blood clot so that they can avoid dangerous interactions. And as we said earlier, Paxlovid is not an option for all patients. Sometimes your provider may need to put you on another medication in order to treat your COVID-19 safely and effectively if you are on a blood thinner. And these are typically for patients at risk for severe disease. The three agents that we have at this time are remdesivir, malnipiravir, and sotruvimab. Unfortunately, none of these agents work as well as Paxlovid. And the rates of keeping patients out of the hospital range from about 30 to 80%, depending on which medication you're prescribed. Who is eligible? So same thing. We're concerned for those patients with mild to moderate symptoms of COVID-19 that are at high risk for developing severe COVID-19 infections, meaning that you're at risk for hospitalization, severe breathing problems, or death. Patients typically have to be older than 12 years of age and weigh at least 88 pounds. How it's given? You can see that malnumipiravir is the only medication that is available orally But again, unfortunately, it only has that 30% reduction in hospitalization and death compared to Paxlovid, which is almost 90%. And the same duration of treatment. So you take that tablet for five days. The other two medications are given by an IV infusion. So require you to either go to an infusion center or be hospitalized for care. And then in terms of drug interactions, that's where all three of these agents do a little bit better. There are no known drug interactions for any of those medications at this time. I know that was a lot to take in, but here are some key points for you to remember. 
So first thing is that new treatments are available for high-risk patients with mild to moderate COVID-19 symptoms. It's really important that you talk to your healthcare provider as soon as you know that you are either testing positive for COVID-19 or having those mild to moderate symptoms to determine if one of these therapies is appropriate for you. Paxlovid is highly effective, but we still do have to be aware of potential medication interactions. And it's always important to let your healthcare provider know that you are on a blood thinner before starting any of these medications. And lastly, it's important to keep in mind that what we know about COVID-19 is constantly changing. One thing that we know for sure now is that patients are starting to report these kind of rebound COVID-19 symptoms after finishing their Paxlovid therapy. If you do start to experience mild to moderate symptoms after stopping your Paxlovid, it's very important to contact your healthcare provider right away to know the best option for treatment moving forward. I hope that you found this information useful and timely. Again, thank you so much for your time and attention. And thank you, Tara, for your time. As you said, what we know about COVID-19 is always changing. So we really appreciate you taking the time to explain how this therapy works, how patients can get it, et cetera. I think it will be very useful for our patients. And thank you to our listeners for joining Patient Pulse. Join us next month for a new episode. 